guys. Hey. So today we interviewed Gabby Corey and Fa Moretti. So we yeah. sat down and talked to them about their installation Cube at So the Bees. It's going to be there until January 29th. So if you want to go visit it, go visit it. You should. Please do it. All right, without further ado, here's Let's the roll the tape. Crazy view. Hi. Hey. Uh, how are you guys? Oh. <laughs> good. How are you? Great. We're good. I'm Julie. This I'm is Lennon. Lennon. I like your name, Lennon. Oh, thank you. I like, I both like your names. name too, Julie, but. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I feel left out. Really, uh, <laughs> important name for me as well. <laughs> so we run hazy it's like a small publication we're just starting out so we're really thankful that you guys are here talking to us you're actually our first guests yeah oh how right exciting on. cool sorry cool. our cat is uh trying oh to bite. that's so, oh, cute. God, so cute don't apologize for the cat the cat's the star he wants to <laughs> we eat want to interview the cat instead <laughs> yeah, what's the name want... her name's lamb chop lamb chop oh, <gasps> he's a oh. chunky I guess she is now chunky. Yeah. <laughs> I feed her too much. So how was your weekend? It's pretty good. Yeah. I, I, weirdly, because of my uh, my suspended adolescence, I don't know the difference between a weekday and a weekend, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> oh. I apologize for that. But, you know, my life has been one long week or weekend depending on how you see it yeah. i cannot relate i work nine to five so i know my <laughs> weekdays and like my weekends oh, yeah. yep i remember that from high school <laughs> Loving those longing weekends. for that friday yep and so cube we wanted yeah. to know how it all started like how do you square like, one yeah square square one. yeah i was like pun intended that, that, that's nice. a good one um <laughs> It was weirdly, we started, it, it was uh, like two years ago, um, I was invited to do a show with another guy called Fabrizio Moretti, uh, with my exact name. He's an art dealer um, and very different personalities, but he's a very nice guy and I, I have respect for him and he, I thought that it would be a very good uh, or an interesting thing to do to be involved with and I was honored to be asked I uh he like lent Sotheby's about no I think like 12 or something like that or 13 12 or 13 works yeah. and then uh and kind of said do what you will with them he's a old master's um uh art dealer which is like 13th to 16th century mostly italian works yeah um, a lot of religious icons yeah and uh i i had been in uh, i'd been living in paris and i had many times gone to the louvre and seen uh people you know with their iphones out as if they were chasing Pokemon and not really experiencing the moment of bliss that can come from standing before a beautiful piece of artwork, uh, that sacred moment between the viewer and the, and the artwork. And I figured why not in this rare occasion try to build a, something that will um, kind of uh, draw focus on that moment. Um, and so I built a maze where like the walls started to convene and, and uh, the artwork was only be beyond the walls so that to be able to see it fully, you would have to kind of corral yourself into a very tight spot where you couldn't share the space with someone else. Already you're kind of having a singular moment and it's hard to like put a camera up when you're kind of face, your face is mashed mm -hmm. between two walls. And uh, yeah, it was basically this kind of maze to reorient the viewer. Um, and the cube was going to be a part of that. It was like one of many, oh. but it was too difficult for me to build at that time. I thought I, the hubris of youth of two year old, two, two years ago, I thought, <laughs> oh, I can do anything. And I quickly found out that I couldn't do it all. Mm. And then mm. we decided to do it in LA. And that's that was a really long answer for a very short question. Um, how did you, Gabby, come along? 
Um, well, I actually, I worked at Sotheby's when he was working on the Fabrizio Moretti, Fabrizio Moretti. And my job was to check the ownership of paintings. I would look in the provenance, that's like the history of ownership to make sure that there wasn't any looted history and that we could proceed with the sale with like a good conscience. And um, so I was actually, I worked on those paintings and I got to like look at the back. And so I, I met him as he was deinstalling the last, and that was like really the only time I was able to see it because I was so busy with work. And I saw it when he was taking it apart. I was like, well, this is cool, all right. <laughs> Um, so we talked and great. And then fast forward to the pandemic and I get a text from him. He's like, hi, hi, do you remember me? We met and you were going to Indiana for Christmas and you were really mad about it. I was like, yeah, that's me. Um, and like right off the bat, we were like working on a project and I brought over like four books on, cause I'm, I went, I got my master's in art history. So I had all these crazy books on Roman architecture. I'm like, you might need these. <laughs> and I was like, whatever project you're doing, I'm in. Um, and then I've kind of been assisting in whatever way I can. And not assisting, partnering. Partnering, yeah. True. But she, it was she she's someone who uh um doesn't mind that I'm constantly annoyingly thinking about how to solve problems instead of, you know, finishing my soup. We eat soup a lot. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of soup do you like? No, no, it's not true. Uh, I do, I love uh, 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 potato leek soup, mm. but Ooh. it's very good, but we don't actually eat that much soup. I was just, I just, that's the first thing that came <laughs> to my mind. But it oh, is, a, I, I cannot imagine being um, with, with somebody like me who's like constantly like, but what if then it falls? I got to come up with something that, and she's like, okay, let's sit down and think about it. That's a great mm -hmm. dynamic. It yeah, it, it was very lucky, like working, like, cause you never really know and how people are going to react until they start working together. And it was just yeah. like, oh, this, this is also great. And, you know, he is the perfectionist where at a certain point I'm like, well, you know, it'll be fine. And he's like, no, we've come this far. And then we kind of trade off doing that, you know, like we have to, one shoulders the exhaustion and the other one takes the lead, but it was, and we had Franco who was the welder, Franco V, who was our, he our was, guy he was the yes. man with the muscle yeah man with the muscle um we were gonna ask about him because yeah we we have no idea what like what was his role in the exhibit he uh he was literally the welder he knows how to weld mm -hmm. and so every design that was that we came up with he you know like made it a reality you know that's cool yeah it was very cool he and weirdly he's yeah he's a, an old friend of mine and i just like i don't know uh, you, do you guys know this weird machine gum record that never have never did anything with it because it came out during the pandemic <laughs> that's um, my favorite record oh thank you so much it is it's very For kind real. Oh, is that the pink oh what the oh, yeah, you have the cube behind you oh, yeah. and i have I have oh. my vinyl right here. It's my most played vinyl in the world. Oh, that's oh, cool. amazing. Yeah. So yeah, so we were so excited about the record, but then we put it out and it was during the pandemic, which was a bummer. We couldn't tour, um, but we, we will get back to it. The, the way that we released that record, I don't know if you remember or mm -hmm. that we, we put out gumball machines everywhere in New York City. Yeah. You either get a gumball or a QR code. And he, Franco was the one who welded the things for it to become like, a, you know, be able to hang on the, on the posts mm -hmm. outside. Yeah, pretty... I still remember that. I was, I'm still mad about it because I live in Atlanta. Uh, uh, and okay. I couldn't go. And I was like, no, but still, <laughs> it was so cool. The three of us, I don't know, as I was saying, like you really know, never know how you're gonna react with someone under pressure, but the three of us at like two in the morning, 
eating takeout like for three months straight you know it we really it was kind of like finals week but finals week that never ends and yeah. you know there's some very real life consequences if the math doesn't add up and luckily we had an amazing structural engineer who ran the calculation like the whole process was us learning enough about force load point load structural engineering enough about that to go like we don't know shit we need a professional <laughs> to help us <laughs> So it was very bonding for everyone in the process. Everyone that came in was just really gave it all, which was very rare, I find. If you've ever been on a group project, there's always like two people that give a shit if you're lucky. Everyone that was involved just was like, what do you need? How can we help? That's so real cool. Because like you said, it's usually just one person that does all the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got a very good network of people. Yeah. I'm nice. very uh, including little oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I can. I want to pet it so bad. Uh, but I wanted to ask, um, because so cube is it connected to conduit? In a like, sense, was it inspired? Yeah, in a sense, there's um there was a uh When I, when I first started working on the music for Machine Gum, it began with my brother. My brother and I had uh, these kind of meetings, like in, he would come and visit me because he lives in Brazil now. He, he would come and visit me in New York and then he would, for a while I was living in Paris and he came to visit me in Paris. And we had this, um, not so much of an inside joke, but this uh, this little thing that we would say to each other. And uh, even though I'm sorry, I can't say it out loud because it's sacred between he and I, <laughs> it kind of is in some of the music in, in Conduit. And, and, so I, and in this concept of this cube as well. So I, I figured I would call it that. It's one of many cubes. Okay. Love that. Because that was my main question, because I, I was like, because I remember you did an exhibit when Conduit came out, like that the next January. I was like, is this the end of the Conduit like era? Because I, yeah, it end. feels like it. Yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm glad that you see the, the through line. And there's more yeah. to come. Yes. Thank God. Strange. Okay, so after been working on it for so long, how this does it feel to like watch people's reaction to like being like see the exhibit, like say cube? There was there were two moments that were incredible to me. One was when we turned on the lights, because believe it or not, when you come up with something, I'm sure you can have experienced this. Um, Many people like have ideas and then in implementing the ideas, you find all these roadblocks and stuff. And when you finally get to the finish line, you're like, wow, thank goodness. Um, in this case, uh, the roadblocks were so drastic and seemingly insurmountable that I thought, Like, man, is it, am, I, am I just going to have to call Sotheby's and say I can't do it? One of these roadblocks was wiring this crazy fucking thing. <laughs> it was like threading. Do you know the, do you know the feeling of th putting a needle through the hole of a, or sorry, the thread through the hole of a needle? Yeah, yeah. frustrating. <laughs> you can't get it. You can't get it. And finally you get it and you're like, yes. And then you have to do a hundred other more of those things. It's just, it was just one of the That's most frustrating tough. things of my life. Weirdly, that one was one where because the wiring is what like the fluorescent lights go to ballasts and stuff, I didn't really know anything and I had to research and learn. And because I had to research and learn that I couldn't ask for help from, from everybody. I, I had to kind of do it myself with, uh, one guy joe and another guy ryan who kind of knew about wiring um when we turned on those lights 
it was like um, I heard joy to the world <laughs> <laughs> when we press that like that button. Um, anyway, that's one. The second one, man, these are really long answers. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's fine. We love them. <laughs> the second one, what the second moment that really gave me bliss was seeing uh, when the guy who had been there, the, he was like the manager of the of the gallery. He had he's a very soft spoken, very kind human being, but also you know diligent and hardworking. So he there was there's not much room for uh, chatter, you know, or like. Yeah. Uh, stoic yeah he's a stoic guy when he walked in and he just said he after after seeing it through the whole process of building it and being like oh this is cool this is cool and then hearing him go oh fuck (laughs) (laughs) i was like yeah and it really comes alive when somebody moves inside there all the reflections that move inside with and from all different types of angles you know pretty cool it is pretty cool very i'm cool. so excited to see it yeah me too you cannot cool yeah. so you're in atlanta yeah and lennon I'm are in florida. you in florida okay yeah we're from the south well yeah. i'm actually not yeah. from here <laughs> where are you originally from oh venezuela oh cool oh. so i have another question like a fun question um do you have like now fab you have instagram like welcome to the thank crazy you welcome to the world. future or the present I no say. it was like <laughs> welcome to the crazy world of yeah. like social media um yeah. have you like i know gabby you've probably been there on instagram for a long time you mm-hmm. have like any account like artists that you look up to like you checking what they're doing media? I've, I've been trying to follow more, you know, without sounding preachy, but like local activism, like there's mm. We Act for J, which is like environmental justice. Like, you know, of course I follow Diet Prada and that type of stuff, like the fun kind of fluffy stuff. But I think it's good to have a balance of activism and cats getting stuck in laundry baskets, yeah, right. you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've the artists that I follow, there's... Um, yeah, I, I've I've been following. There's a, a gallery in London that I really like called Unit London, and they have a lot of really cool contemporary, like up and coming artists. Because um, since I currently work at Artnet, I'm luckily enough to get exposed to what's going on in galleries. So anything that I like, I I follow. And there's actually this really cool gallery in Miami. It's called like Art to Save Lives, and all the profits sold go to um I think to rescue animals from no-kill shelters and they're like the loveliest people in the artist to find them um but yeah so I think a good balance and I like historical stuff you know medieval manuscript little corners so all about balance yeah that's pretty cool yeah do you guys have anybody that you guys think we should follow yeah. any recommendations actually you know what I feel dirty <laughs> even saying that. <laughs> I, it feels I, weird. I don't, I don't, I only, for the record, I only got this Instagram because the guy from Sotheby's, my friend Brom, was like, man, you should really do it because you should just like, you should be able to talk about your art free from, you know, mm. from the strokes. Yeah. Instagram. Yeah. I agree. And I think that's cool. But I, I'm trying, uh, right now I'm walking a very fine line. I'm almost starting to become addicted. I oh find my, myself, oh no. Oh, I wonder how many followers I have. <laughs> I'm like, no, don't do that. <laughs> so it's a scary place. It, it really is. It's addicted so easily. Yeah, and so I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to keep it away and only co- have it come up when it, when it has something to do with <laughs> you know with your art yeah and like the, when you first get it and you're just like oh my god the whole world of course yeah. you're gonna like what have I missed like what is what are people doing it's yeah but it's stranger than that mm. it's like it it seems like it's the whole world 
but there's also but there it's a really funneled vision of the whole world so mm. there's like these very specific things that you get caught in the hooks are like oh my god I can't believe this picture of me when I was 21 years old is here and then and then the other hook is like oh my god I wonder what Miles is doing on Tuesday taking photographs of this person yeah. and you're like it doesn't feel like the whole it's almost more claustrophobic than and I don't see an expanse with a sunrise and a sunset. I see these little tubes of matrixy awkwardness, you know? Yeah, because I mean? it is curious. Oh, this question. I missed that question from Cube. Was it like any type of music genre that you were like listening while like studying and like building it? Or no music at all because you guys were too busy. That were on repeat. You know, that's. Yeah, an interesting thing that I would speak to um, my buddy Joe about. It's so strange. I, I ne I don't listen to music when I work on stuff. Like maybe when I draw, I listen to I listen to audio books weirdly. Oh. But um, but yeah, it seems like I need to, like music is. I don't know it. It can thrill you and it can make you sad and it can it can paint your mood so much that you, I, I kind of need to equalize and and not have my mood be swayed it needs to be focused or something does that make any sense no that makes yeah. sense yeah yeah I listen to music when I know I'm when I'm when I'm willing to become the I'm actor fixed. the actor in a movie where I see myself like oh this is the moment for <laughs> You look out the window and yeah. it's raining. Yeah, and this is the moment where I tell him to go fuck himself. <laughs> and 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 yeah, when you're like when you're like, wait, but what is 15 times 32? <laughs> you're like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what happens to me. Cause yeah. I have some friends that they, when they're studying, they go like through a 10 hour playlist. And they have lyrics. It's not like instrumental, it's just lyrics. And I'm like, how can you do that? We'll be like, I cannot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I listened to music when I was sanding. It was a lot of uh Beyonce's live concert homecoming because oh. was, there was a day of 14 hour sanding and I had a really bad cold. And I was like, if Beyonce can do this after just having twins, then I can get it together. <laughs> <laughs> Keep sanding. Um, so I I listened to that like a disturbing amount of times and some podcasts but yeah I always did find it strange that I would put on music and you're like please <laughs> I wasn't I don't think I was like no, that. no I wasn't like <laughs> some weird dictator I, I, I would like, just, shut that it, off yeah <laughs> it would be more like you know the music would be on and I would secretly go there and be like beep, beep, and turn it on <laughs> I kind of want to know more about the materials you used to make it and what inspired you to use like the mirrors. I like that they're like a one-way mirror so you could see the people experiencing it, but they're experiencing something else inside of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, basically this, the, the pro project, there's certain things, there's certain times where you dictate what you want to use to tell a story. And there are other times when the thread tells you what you have to use. Um, and there was really like, this was a, a, a project where um, the rules of the game were set by the goal, you know what I mean? And uh, I had to learn how to use the rules of the game. Whereas in other forms of like, when you're drawing, you can be the guy manipulating all the worlds, you know? I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, the, to be able to have a system where you can see somebody inside and they can't see you already, you know, you're going to be working with not just the one way mirror, which I always thought was called two way mirror, but in reality, it's called one way mirror. And it, not only are you working with that kind of stuff, but you're, you also have to play with lighting. It has to be that 70% of the light is inside and 30% of the light is outside or else the effect won't work. So you're all, like, the more you start to learn, the more the, 
physics dictate what it is that you're going to be uh, making. And it be, you know, your dreams start to get whipped by reality. <laughs> um, by gravity. <laughs> yeah, and like, for example, like I didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, have to use steel. I wanted to make the thing completely out of glass. But when you get to a point where you're building a structure for somebody to walk inside of, uh, it has to be secure enough that the glass won't break. It has to be um, big enough so that the person has enough room to walk in. And also so that somebody who, who, so that there's a wheelchair accessibility as well, because you don't want to, you know, only cater to people, you know, without wheelchairs and stuff. And did that sound weird or did, did that make sense? Yeah. Makes um, sense. Uh, and so all of a sudden these things like you know you, you have to use steel and you have to make it strong and yeah that's how we started okay the steel and the glass and then california has a lot of earthquakes so we had to oh, like yeah. that's where the structural engineer came in and yeah so it was just like i said earlier every step of the way having to learn something yeah. enough to realize Oh God, we need <laughs> and it had to be modular. So yeah. we had to build uh, the steel, you know, small enough that it could be like transported easily, but big enough so that it was robust, mm -hmm. you know. Very delicate balance. And all the while you're trying to say, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, give and take. You say, okay, I understand that I have to do this with this kind of material, but how can I, still preserve the original idea a little bit with these materials you know if it that seemed like be. such a big learning process oh yeah, yeah. you must like know like some random facts now yeah <laughs> i do like for example the biggest one that was really interesting to me is that well you know how steel deflects like that's why they use um steel for bridges and for buildings so that the element can sway it but it doesn't break it has much higher flexibility than glass which is a weird thing to think yeah like the concept of flexibility is something that we learned yeah we thought we knew like oh you can like, ooh, like yeah like a, 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 like yeah. for example steel is more flexible than a rubber band which what? is really bizarre to me yeah because you know, there's a, a breaking point with rubber bands where you it, they snap, right. whereas steel can flex. That's why, like when whenever you're now, whenever I'm in turbulence in an airplane, I'll never be scared again when I see the windows flat or the wings flapping oh. in the window. They can bend like almost to to touch itself and come back. Yeah. Anyway, that's very boring and no, nerdy. that's perfect because I'm like scared of you're so airplanes scared of and I'm like. Me too. Don't be yeah. scared of planes. <laughs> no one really, anymore. Every time you get into a car, think to yourself, I wish I was getting in a plane because you have more chances of surviving in a plane than but in a car. They have to drive everywhere. Oh yeah, forget what I just <laughs> <Yeah>. said. <laughs> we do have to drive hours and hours every day. You're great, you're great, you're fine. <laughs> and we're like, that helped me because that helps me because I'm going to be flying to new york like in a couple of weeks and i'm oh, like cool. dreading it don't mm. dread it yeah. <laughs> yeah don't dread it just forget it yeah yeah <laughs> that rhyme our cat likes to steal food from our plates so she's the sneaky the sneaky the sneaky yeah, hands yeah like, oh my god and she and she's she often sits on my on my lap while we're eating and a piece of rice <laughs> fell on <laughs> on her head. And I just found that she still has like a little bit of sticky rice on her, oh. on her which is strange. She can't get it. Yeah, because I can't quite get it's it. Like, it's maybe she's saving it for later. Yeah. yeah. Like people do with gum. They put it behind yeah, their ears. ears. That is so gross. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty gross. Can I, can I ask a weird question? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite favorite tw Taylor Swift song, if you have any? I, I'm being a Swifty right now. I'm like nice. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm not that familiar with her music. 
I apologize. I should get with it, but you are, right? No, I'm not. Oh, you're not? <gasps> but you know what? I've been wanting to get into it because I've read her, the lyrics that she writes and she's yeah. such a brilliant lyricist. Like I, I've been wanting to set aside time to like go through the discography in the way that you're like, everyone's like, oh my God, you needed to watch Game of Thrones. And then you're like, I'm going to set aside five days to watch it. Like, I feel like I'm doing that. Like the- I need to just track the evolution, but yeah. I've- if anything, start with her last two albums. Really? I like her older stuff. I like her yeehaw music. <laughs> her yeehaw? yeehaw music. <laughs> it's a big country. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. No. Well, I'll check them both out. Yeah, we'll, we'll start a, a marathon. Taylor Swift marathon. Yeah. Lennon, do you have another question or like so we can leave them alone? <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's see. So, with Spotify wrapped, what's your top artists? Oh. oh. I don't know. Yeah, check. Let's see. Yeah. I think live what reaction. Your... What, was yeah, yours? What, was, what was yours while we look? Ooh. This Mine band was... called Inhaler. Have you heard of them? Inhaler, I know that. I've seen. I think they're in my top. I've... Oh, you know what? It sucks. It's a bunch of, it's a weirdly. White noise music. <laughs> no, it's um, it's because I use to rehearse. I use like uh, Spotify. It's easier. I just go to the rehearsal room with oh. my phone and listen. So there's a bunch of stroke songs, but I promise you, I'm not listening to that for pleasure. It's for <laughs> rehearsal. <laughs> Your top bar is the strokes. The no, no, <laughs> it's actually Bowie. It's actually David Bowie. And, oh, that's good. Uh, Schubert. Weirdly that's enough. That's cool. Yeah. And the Beach Boys. <laughs> yep. Beach oh, we love the Beach Boys. Very old mm-hmm. stuff. What was yours, Gabby? Uh, Cry Baby, Janis Joplin. Mm. Uh, also the Beach uh, Heroes and Villains by the Beach Boys. And what's uh, I know I have a totally random one. Um, yep. There's some. There's some little joy. There's some. Hey. There's some Beyonce, you know, had to work. Yeah, so it's a good mix. But I, yeah, Cry Baby good. is my number one. What, so yours, what was yours? Mine was Lana Del Rey. Oh, like nice. Alexandra Savior. This, like, oh, I love her. She's a, like a singer. Cool. Um, Alexandra Savior? Yeah, yeah, check her out. She's, She's pretty great. cool. She's really nice. I'm going to check her out right now. Alexandra I was Savior. Savior. Her music's like hauntingly beautiful. Yeah. It feels like you're in a movie. Alexandra Savior. Savior. Okay. Cool. And of course, Machine Gum. And then it was really oh, sad because I got I Bo Burnham. I know Can't Help Myself. I know that yeah, song. It's such a good song. So yeah, good. Huh. Yes. She's, yeah. Cool. How come I, I, you see, it's just a testament of how my brain is leaving me because I didn't remember that name, but I listened to that song a bunch. Agreed. She's so good. She's very talented. She's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. I wanted to just to, to say um, thank you for doing this very much. It's, uh, it's an honor and really nice that you guys are starting this zine. Is it a zine or a, what, what, online magazine? A little bit yeah. of both. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How did you guys meet? Yeah. So we met uh, on Twitter, like Twitter. a long time ago. Oh, uh-huh. wow. Cool. And, and then... so have you ever actually physically met? Yeah. yeah. Recently. Oh, oh good. cool. Good. Good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We went to a festival together. Yeah. That's and awesome. Then and then we're like, let's off. start this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That's really great. I feel like you guys, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to see a lot from you guys. Oh, so good. Well, thank you for being our like. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud to be. I'm proud to be the first. Yeah. Aw. Thank you, really Gabby fun. and Fab. This is really insightful too. We learned a lot. And I, we'll see you guys soon because I'm going. Even though we're like 
talking about the strokes we will go into the yeah, we're, we're going, going to the, to new the york show later meet. this month no way. Oh, yeah. oh cool oh, awesome. yeah. oh that's why you're coming to new york yeah yeah, yeah i'm yeah. scared of the play yes it should be fun that's awesome. oh cool it's gonna be great that mm. yeah it's gonna be fun hopefully it will hopefully i mean <laughs> It's yeah. Hopefully, we'll ring in a better New Year than we when. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. Because I remember you guys did it, and then the pandemic happened. Yeah. Oh yeah, big time. Mm -hmm. It was you guys. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> blamed cats. <laughs> the movie, and then. Oh yeah. It was you guys. Yeah. Thank you guys so much, and I guess see you soon. Yeah. Have yeah. a safe flight. You're thank gonna have you. a great time. Oh, well, thank Watch you. Some movies. Have you a great will. day, you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye, bye to the cat too. Oh yeah. yeah. Bye, Lamb Shop. Loafing over there. <laughs> oh, bye. Bye. Bye.